This morning in the Atlanta airport, no one's missing a meal on Mac Wilburn's watch. With 11 restaurants to serve passengers, he's got dining for every destination. And it all started when Mac talked with First Horizon Bank about opening a franchise in the airport. Now it's open for business and cleared for takeoff. First Horizon Bank, let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Mac. First Horizon Bank, member FDIC. There's a fine line between genius and insanity, and we're walking it. It's the Marketing Madhouse. I'm Moira Vetter, your host for Marketing Madhouse. Uh, today we have a special treat. Uh, we've got Kirk Wells here. He's a senior creative um, at our company, Moto Moto Agency, uh, and this is where the love fest parts start. Um, he's somebody that I've worked with a very, very long time, um, you know, from really the beginnings of his career. And, you know, I think we've experienced a ton together in terms of, you know, coming into our own, you know, as professionals, as parents, um, you know, as, uh, you know, really, um, you know, deep in our disciplines, in your case, you know, an artist, an illustrator, a filmmaker. Of course, I've written down a comedian because uh, you've got one of the best senses of humor, um, but just... You're somebody I love and admire and uh, want, wanted to have you on. Um, so we are going to be more scattered than we've probably ever been on Marketing Madhouse. Uh, we just truly have a list of about 100 things that we could talk about. Um, so Kirk Wells, tell us, say hi to everybody. Tell us about yourself and then we're going to launch into a dissertation. Wow, that's an amazing intro. Um, I am Kirk Wells. Uh, uh, I am an associate creative director at Moto Moto Agency. Uh, I've been working in marketing, advertising. Uh, I think it's over twenty five years now. I know I think it gets, starts to get scary to say that. Doesn't yeah, it? I started looking, uh, and it's like mm -hmm. plus twenty, and I was like, no, it's mm. it's more than that. It's mm -hmm. very specific. Um, I uh, I. Uh, this has been all I've done as a professional. It's all I wanted to do. Uh, I uh, played football for the University of Florida. Go Gators. Um, and uh, got my degree from the University of Florida and just have uh, kind of chased design and marketing in every form I can mm -hmm. uh, for the last 25 years and just had a fun time doing it. So I want to go into that a little bit. Um, you know, one thing I will say, you know, there are some people that achieve – you know, get a career, gain skills, and learn to do something. And then there are people that just are that, right? You are a creative through and through. It's who you always were. You just happen to find the jobs that were attached to who you were, I feel like. Would Abs you agree absolutely. With that? Yeah. I think, um, yeah, for sure. And we've been lucky enough to do that. I've, I've met people who are uh, probably better artists, smarter people, uh, unlimited creativity. But I've managed to find uh, find a place in the world and, and in uh, in design uh, where I can use all of my skill sets, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. where that's where the magic happens for me. Is I get to do everything I love to do anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, that's the thing um, that makes it makes it not only great to see the work that you do, but fun to work with you and um, you know people that are doing the thing they love. It feels very different than people that are just doing a job. For sure. I think, the, and part of it, I'm sure I annoy my coworkers in the office, uh, but it's in a good way, maybe. Uh, but I, I, I do have fun doing it. There are there are tasks that are not time entry, um, <laughs> production work, uh, re-photoshopping to get someone's cuticles a little bit cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> those are not the high points. But I think with, all, with every one of those, there's something really exciting about every project, about every challenge that I, I can't help but still get excited about. I, right. I keep waiting for the day where I'm like, oh, here yeah. we go. Here's another, yeah. here's another online ad or here's mm -hmm. another. But I don't. There's always something new to, to get me going. And mm -hmm. I think when that changes... You know, maybe I'll be dead inside. Yeah, I don't hopefully. know. Or, or just dead. Or just maybe dead. Maybe just be but, dead. That yeah, might be better. Hopefully yeah, it will, yeah. yeah, hopefully it will last that long. So. Um, so so, when did you know you wanted to be a designer? Or did you know you wanted to be I a designer? I think this is going to sound pretentious. Uh, well, I'll answer it two ways. I think I, if looking back, I knew my, I think I was in Riverdale Elementary School, my fourth grade class they had a t-shirt design contest for field day and I did a, a drawing and all I knew about field day was it was very ceremonious and it reminded me of the Olympics mm -hmm. so I did torches and a globe 
yep. and hand drawn type, and it was I'm sure god awful. It's yeah. one of the few T-shirts I've ever done that I don't still have. Yeah, and it won. Uh, and oh my, it was like right. that was the I still get goosebumps. I, yeah, it, it that was, the, was it. And I didn't know what design was. I just thought I, I drew a yep. T-shirt. I drew yep. a T-shirt, and that's all anyone in my family. Is and like, that's oh, why you artist. still are always doing damn T-shirts, right? To, is that the, do you? It is the curse. It is um, my favorite. Uh, my favorite. I guess uh, poet you call him, mm-hmm. but also writer, just just one of my favorite historical figures is E.E. E. Cummings. And mm-hmm. the biggest lesson I learned from E.E. E. Cummings is be careful what you get good at. Mm-hmm. And I think because all he wanted to do was be a painter, but mm-hmm. all he got paid to do was be a writer. And yeah. damn it, if he wasn't a brilliant uh, writer. Mm-hmm. So it's it's tough. Yeah. And, and I don't feel sorry for him because I'm yeah. in the same boat. No matter how far I go, what skill sets I add. There's always a T-shirt to be made, yep, and yep. and while it's sometimes it's begrudging, I love doing it. Yeah, well, I got to say, my my closet is filled with your T-shirts, so <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, talk it. So yesterday, uh, you had an opportunity to join us. We had a group of about twenty or so students from KSU. They were in the marketing program. So you know, sometimes people are in design or creative side uh you know arts programs sometimes they're in uh, marketing so we had a whole group in and you know one of the things that people coming up in their career you know it's one thing to know what you think you want to do and start getting a degree in that area and then it's an entirely different thing particularly in strange economies or weird times and we're in one of these weird economic times there's lots of layoffs going on i think everybody in there was like how do you go get a job right very serious um, so talk about that a little bit. And I know it was a different time, but, you know, in terms of, you know, going from that path, actually, let's let's hit on football for a minute. So so you go to college. Yes. Talk about so you you were a jock and an artist, which doesn't always like that. Do, that's not breakfast club material. No, right? okay. um, it uh, it was an interesting dichotomy for sure, because in high school, uh, I, you know, in high school, you play sports, you get the jock reputation and then. You get uh, then. Then I was also a, pr- a decent student. I'll say yep. I was a decent student. So you know your 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 sports friends think you're a nerd. Uh, everyone else thinks you're just this jock. Uh, mm-hmm. I, uh, it, so it was a it was a it, it was a weird uh, place to be, but not a bad one. Yep. And college, it was even more amplified mm-hmm. because if you're on the football team at a major university, the people in your class. If they're like designers, artists, photographers, they could care less about football. Uh, yeah. So it was great to be a part of this thing that yep. the rest of the state and the rest of the fan base is really excited about. Yep. And I'm in a room with uh, 21 other people who could give a crap. Right. Now, it also goes the other way, too. Right. I mean, because there's only football. Right. Oh, yes. Like if you're on the football team at a major university, that's all you you are. a football that's what player, you are. Period. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then you go into practice yeah. and then those same guys. Yeah, are like teasing you a little bit. You bring a painting into the locker right. room. That's not a good look. You don't want to. That's not a place you right. want to to kind of. Do be you like vulnerable. where I'm going with this landscape? Yeah, How's this exactly. blue? Do you like this blue? I've yeah. been collaging, guys. Yeah. What do you yeah. think? Ironically, though, both both sides end up coming around mm-hmm. eventually. Mm-hmm. I there are three uh, three players two of whom played in the NFL, Mm -hmm. who have tattoos on them that I designed. Ah, One of them is a coach at a major university. Mm -hmm. Uh, I won't say who. I don't want to out anybody. Mm -hmm. But uh, And then uh, a number of my friends who had nothing to do with football became interested in the sport Mm -hmm. a little bit, just to, if nothing else, to watch me get the crap knocked out of me on on Saturdays. Sure, sure. So so you're a a bringer together of the world. I I would hope to. I don't know that those two groups will ever fully mix, but in a small way, I hope I I brought some Mm -hmm. of them together. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so let's jump over to first job and then we'll probably be coming into a break. Let's, let's talk about, um, what was your first job and how first job out of college? Okay. I guess technically the first job was a a small, I don't know if I've ever told you this, a Mm -hmm. small freelance gig I got right before I got a full-time gig. So I came home from school, moved back into the parents' Mm -hmm. house for what I imagined was going to be like a week and I would yeah. get a job and then have a huge what apartment. what everybody imagines, right? right? You know? yeah. mm-hmm. And I was sending out resumes on the fax machine mm-hmm. and getting nothing back. Yeah. So my mom like slides a little application across the desk. So I, the first job out of college was a substitute teacher oh. at, the, at the elementary school I went to really? for my elementary school teacher who oh taught my. me in kindergarten. Oh, no, no, no. Really? And I think I learned as much about that. 
uh, as I did any other job I had mm-hmm. before before I got into design. It was fantastic. I worked for a week and then mm-hmm. I got uh, strep throat done. Yeah. <laughs> but the, uh, the, I did a little freelance job for a PR firm in Atlanta. Uh-huh. Uh, Solomon says I don't know uh-huh. if they're still around or not. I don't know. But I, it was a quick hit design job, yep. and I was a, a fresh out of the fresh out of school, like yep. hungry to do it. And they divided it up. It was a pitch for Home Depot, I believe. It was a mm-hmm. pitch for Home Depot. And I had six concepts, and another designer had six concepts. Mm-hmm. And I went home, and I was furiously working on mm-hmm. it in my, my office, and my parents were bringing me coffee. It was yeah. adorable. And then I get a <laughs> phone call, and uh, it's the owner, and she says, uh, the other designer dropped out. Can you take all 12? Oh, my God. And yeah. I, pa- I panic attack. Yeah. I had my but I was like, I'm going to do it. I said, yes. Mm-hmm. I got my parents in there. I took photos of my dad with an apron on so I could mm-hmm. do an illustration of a guy with a hard hat and hold I, a hammer. I'm going inter- to say this about you. Kirk is a historian, so he is archiving this information. How many of your journals do you have? You have all, uh, how many? Oh, what's your journal I've, library oh, look like? I'm up to like 12. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think I don't think that's his. I don't think it's as impressive as the the, the coverage. Like yes, it yes. is page. I don't have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I've but got a twelve wall to wall. Right, but you you pages. are you are documenting everything, everything, everything as you go. Like the you know the people he he has his whole history with him. He can tell you the stories and he's drawn the pictures of it and he's got the notes of it. So so you're in there. You're archiving yeah. this this these concepts. Yes. And so what happens? Oh, but great part the computer dies. And I'm, sp- I'm supposed to go on vacation. I had a, a trip planned to Canada the next day. Had a flight booked. Sure. So I panicked. Sure. My mom was sick to her stomach. It mm-hmm. was. I, I, I broke her heart that night. And we they said up- you're out of this business. No. No. We got up early because my mom, she, she didn't raise no Dads chicken. Don't quit. She didn't raise mm-hmm. no chicken. She's like, you're gonna get up, you're gonna yeah, drive that computer again. in there, and you're gonna see if they'll fix it. So I drove it in. She's yep. like, I got you an appointment. Geek Squad, go. Yep. Dropped off the computer. They're like, we got this. We're going to send it over to Solomon Says when, we, yep. when we're done. But I was four hours past my flight time. So I go into <laughs> Solomon Says, and I'm just going to do the work now. Like, I've finished the concepts. Yeah. And I told uh, the owner what happened. She spent three hours on the phone rebooking my flight and got me on my trip and with no extra cost. Yeah. And I was like, that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, so that was the first experience. And so... No more work for them when I came back from Canada. Nothing of course, yeah, had. yeah. And I got a job at a, just a production house. Mm-hmm. They were they were printing things, and they needed people to put logos mm-hmm. on it, mm-hmm. and it was the death of the soul. Mm-hmm. It did give me enough money to move out of my parents' house, so mm-hmm. I, I could. Which is sometimes all that the first job is good for, yes, right? Getting you out of your parents' house. And I am thankful because mm-hmm. I now know what I don't ever want to do. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I've, I had that perspective. I wasn't super happy with my job. So yeah. when the better opportunity came along, yeah. I took it. It's and a- that's the, where we met. And that's where we met, and that's a perfect segue. We're gonna we're gonna take a break for a minute, and when we come back uh, with Mr. Kirk here, we are going to talk about some of the exciting things that you do, some of the aspects of creative that people in the design profession sweat about that other people never even know exist. Uh, we will be right back with Marketing Madhouse. This morning in the Atlanta airport. No one's missing a meal on Mac Wilburn's watch. With 11 restaurants to serve passengers, he's got dining for every destination. And it all started when Mac talked with First Horizon Bank about opening a franchise in the airport. Now it's open for business and cleared for takeoff. First Horizon Bank, let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Mac. First Horizon Bank, member FDIC. Support for Extra 106.3 comes from Natural Body Spa and Skin Remedy, celebrating their 35th anniversary and offering gift cards in-store and online. You can discover Mother's Day and anniversary presents online at Natural Body Spa and Skin Remedy at naturalbody.com. And we are back with Marketing Madhouse. So, Kirk, we, we talked a little bit about getting into the world, getting into your field, you know, finding uh, finding the thing that you love. And so now I want to start to talk about some of the meat and potatoes of a design and creative career. So what what is exciting about being creative? What, what does it mean? How do, you, how do you get paid to be creative? Uh, well, the exciting part is I, I love ideas. I love having ideas. I feel like if I, I don't know what I would do if I wasn't in design. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. I, I it, it, it's it's part of my daily life. So getting paid to do what I would do anyway 
Yeah. Is, uh, yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mm-hmm. like I feel like it's like what models must feel like. Yeah, like right. You I get look paid good to anyway, look amazing. And I, yeah. I know they work hard. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not saying it's yeah. an easy thing, but I think it's akin to that. It's like getting getting paid to breathe. Right. Um, right. And, and right. get getting to share that with other people. That's the other thing. Yeah. I'm addicted to feedback. I am yeah. addicted to approval. It's mm-hmm. it's it's bad in moments, and it's mm-hmm. it probably makes me a little needy sometimes or a little pushy when mm-hmm. I put things in front of people. Mm-hmm. But design gives me an opportunity to every day make something and to have someone see it and react yeah. to it. I don't yeah. think you get that in a lot of different professions, especially in the creative field. It's, yeah. it's tough. And sometimes well, you get bad feedback. Yeah, I want, I want to say something about that because you, you use the word approval. But I, th- I think feedback is the better word. And I, there is a lot in the, in the creative area that, I mean... You don't. It's not nice all the time. And right, there's a lot of this is crap. Start over. You that's know. That's where I think football yeah. comes in. Yeah. Okay. So and talk I about football. Yeah. I that is uh, that. That's what I learned the most. I mean, obviously, work ethic and uh, dedication and putting mm-hmm. the time in. But I mean, when you go into a meeting room five days a week during the season and you spend the first hour and a half going over every mistake you made the previous day. Yeah. In on film, yeah. and I'll be honest with you. Uh, it's gotten better, but th- those rooms can be brutal, and mm-hmm. it's it, it's a bunch of people. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and th- when something's funny, it's funny, and getting like yeah. it, it's tough not to get thick skin. Yeah. And I played for a coach who had no qualms about telling yeah. you exactly how he felt about you. Yeah. And who was that coach? St- uh, coach Spurrier. Yeah. The old head ball yeah. coach. Yeah. He he did not have a filter. Yep. And he spoke his mind. And he could be funny. Yep. You just hope he wasn't talking about you when he yeah. was being funny. Well, you know, one of the things I said, um, I had a talk not long ago, and I was talking about it's good to be in environments where people are hard and people are really direct because the sooner you can take that feedback, you know, you, you can you can produce from it. You can, you know, it, it it's both in terms of being able to hear things, whether you want to or not, but then what do you do with that? Because sometimes it's, Maybe you don't agree with it, but sometimes there's really great information that other people never share with you, and you, you never would have known. You know, I agree. I yeah. agree. I think it is tough to separate out that separate that out. And I think for me, what I've learned over the years is is distance. Yeah, take a step back. You get hard feedback, mm-hmm. or you get edits you don't want to make, or you get a, a perspective you don't really mm-hmm. appreciate in the moment. Don't reject it out of hat. Take yeah. a step back, yeah. and then when you when you can think about it, there will be something either that resonates or doesn't, and then you can build a case on that yeah. for why you would or why you wouldn't make the change or why you yeah. would accept it. But I think distance gets it because if you're too connected to the work, it's hard to see it from a critical standpoint. So, I th- but I think it's great to be able to say. Also, if you're too sensitive, you're going to go to immediately to a panic or to a, a place of uh, uh, shame, and yeah. that's not what it's about. Being able to dissociate the emotion from the feedback is important. exactly and and so i want to um i want to talk about the strategy of design in a minute but but let's stay on you know we're talking about feedback we're talking about hard feedback we're talking about it's the thing you love so you get to do you think the thing you love but what is the thing that is scary about being a creative it's, is there something it's scary? The, it's the great white bull. It is It is what Hemingway has called the great white bull. It's the, the blank page. It's mm-hmm. every time you go in, is this it? Is, are you done? Mm-hmm. Is that your last idea? Mm-hmm. Is are this you, the first idea or is this the one or the yeah. last one? Are you yeah. relevant? Does anyone mm-hmm. bother to to steal from your design mm-hmm. inspiration mm-hmm. anymore? Or are you just doing what you've done in the past? And like, how do the, you know? How do you know that? I think it's the feedback. I think mm-hmm. it's surrounding yourself with people who give you honest feedback and never being afraid to get honest feedback. I I go through informal channels all the time, reach out to coworkers, some more senior than me, a lot more junior. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what do you think about this? What do you see here? And they don't know why I'm asking or what their right. response is supposed to be. I don't know that that anyone can stay relevant in all the shifting trends yeah. and styles. Uh, but I do think trying to yeah. always be relevant or at least trying to tap into the core of design, which never changes, yeah. the, the principles that it's built on, yeah. and trying to never being afraid to learn new skills. Yeah. And I think that's that's how I do it. I, yeah. fight, the, I fight the fear by making work, yeah. making iterations, doing things that I don't particularly think look good, yeah. just to see. Right, just to see. Just yeah. To see. You know, something uh, you said a minute ago about principles, I think is really important and interesting and I think it's missed on people it's missed on early career and late career people but maybe in the middle you get this 
you know, early in career, everybody wants to know what the rules are, right? Mm-hmm. What are the foundations? What are the principles? Um, but if it's stuff that people have been doing for a while, everybody thinks that it's it's old, right? That's old thinking. Mm-hmm. And they over fixate on the shiny object, right? The new thing. And then everybody wants to do what the new is. Um, and you have to have a balance. You have to know the rules that you shouldn't break and the rules you should. But if you're not constantly looking at the changing thing and moving forward you're going to be irrelevant like you talked about it right am i relevant Mm -hmm. um and so it's hard to do both of those things it's hard to keep your principles keep the foundational things and respect them right where where they are but also try to break them and push the envelope like how do you do both of those things I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I do it. I think sometimes I do it well and sometimes not so well. And I Mm -hmm. think just learning that, I think, I think always coming back to the principles when it comes to how am I communicating? Is this doing what I need it to do functionally? And I think knowing when to break it is if you're breaking it, why are you breaking it? How does Mm -hmm. that further Mm -hmm. the, how does that further your cause of getting a reaction, getting an action? Uh, Because that's the thing with marketing is Mm -hmm. we're, we're not just putting things in front of you. We're trying to influence you in a way we're trying to, um, I love this uh, idea of cognitive dissonance. We're trying to put an idea in your brain yeah. and make you think it's yours. Or we're trying to present you with a solution to a mm-hmm. problem you didn't know you had or yeah. any number of things. So is is why you're breaking that principle. In service in to service getting of that, that done. Yeah. And does it, I think ultimately the thing I worry about too is going one step further with, with, with trends and designs is in five years, is this going to feel like it was done in 2024? Is everyone yes. going to say, Oh my yeah. God, that's so dated. Yeah. So it's, it, it is that fine razor's edge that uh, you have to ride. And sometimes you hit it and sometimes mm-hmm. you skate off of it and you miss, but mm-hmm. I th- you got, I think you, you aim for it, you do your best and mm-hmm. you, you always come back to the principles, mm-hmm. you know, cause I think those, those don't change. Yeah. Um, so one of the things uh, that we did together, uh, I, I always say I wrote a book. I think we wrote a book. Uh, you, uh, no, you definitely uh, okay, wrote okay. the book. I wrote the book and you designed the book. And it's it's a heavily visual book. It's about the journey and the adventure of being an entrepreneur and all these different stages you go through, the archetypes, the the things, right? And it really did lend itself to being visualized. And so I want to kind of talk about strategic design. I think when people hear design, they say, I don't like that picture, or I don't know why we picked those colors, or why isn't the headline bigger? And that is a very surface view of design, right? Whereas strategic design is um, making people drawn to something. It's illuminating the important fact, right? Shining the light on the right thing or using negative space to make it unavoidable to see something, right? There's there's all these things that strategically design does, right? And mm-hmm. it is about taking away the noise and pointing your attention or drawing your attention to something and then making it unforgettable. Like I can't unsee that thing, right? I keep I keep seeing that. And so when, when we worked on the book together, that was just, you know, I'm just as a side note, not even, you know, I just loved it. I loved working on that. It was very collaborative. We kind of talked through these different ideas and you would, you know, it really was like I imagine uh, Elton John and Bernie Taupin, right? Like, the, you know, one person's writing words. And the others right in the music and you know there was a lot of that back and forth absolutely yeah, yeah. and it was it was kind of like getting it, i remember at first thinking oh i've got a i've got a wide open i i, I can do whatever i want mm-hmm. but then ke- i kept coming back to the text and i kept seeing i have this problem mm-hmm. i if it's a great idea or when i'm reading something it's a story i see it in my head i really mm-hmm. do i i mm-hmm. Uh, my wife loves that about, uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, she loves if I read something, I can yeah. see it because she's, she's. You're a screenwriter, right? Yeah, like she, you see the picture. Yeah, of like the, it's, yeah. I can, it's like a movie in my yeah, head. And yeah. with, 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 with that book, with Advent, with Adventure, it, 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 it came together. And mm-hmm. I wanted to bring what was I was seeing mm-hmm. uh, to, the, to, to the book, to, to the text, because mm-hmm. the words are great. The story is perfect. It pulls you through. It explains things in a way that's very easy to understand, these complex kind of things, and in ways that are fun, that, that mm-hmm. are memorable, mm-hmm. and that are shareable. Yeah. That's the best part about that yeah. to me, is it's written in a way and designed to support that, that it's shareable. Mm-hmm. And I think had 
uh, was social media where yeah, was like yeah, Instagram yeah. even yeah, a thing? Yeah, I don't even yeah, yeah. I don't know no, if Instagram. Uh, yeah. if, I think if it was, mm-hmm. we, those would have been posts after yeah. post after post of these these principles mm-hmm. and these things these these like thought nuggets. Yep. So I think it was kind of ahead of its we're time. We're going to bring them thought nuggets back cuz I think great. we're going to do a, a That's what I'm I, yeah, I my yeah. personal life. Mm-hmm. I have all yeah. these things that I made before social media yeah. and they yeah. just never saw the light of day yeah. and I think those are begging for it. They are yeah. digestible chunks and I think that was how we went into it and it, I think the collaborative portion is 100%. It was yeah. back and forth every day yeah. getting inspired by something you wrote. You yeah. writing towards, "Oh, yeah. this is a great graphic. Let's yeah. do this." I'd see the image and I'd be like, oh, 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 wait, we got to also talk about, it's you know. Cr- it holds up, yeah. Um, so let's talk about Edward Tufte. Uh, so, you know, we work in business to business. It is a very complex, uh, sometimes it's complex, and sometimes that's the problem with it, right? It needs to be simplified or singular or, you know, you need to be able to, you know, pull out the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. We're not going to talk about this 80%. We're going to get over here to the 20 yeah. Um, and I know you did a little fun animation on Edward Tufty, and you know there are certain people that everybody has not everybody. Some people have heard of Ogilvy on advertise right like these these famous people in advertising. Um, most people that are just general business people wouldn't know of famous people in design. Like I'm sure you know a whole bunch of you know brand designers and things that wouldn't be household names, but. When we started really looking at data visualization and how to tell complex stories in interesting and fun and engaging ways, you know, Edward Tufte comes to the to the fore. So, will you talk about who he is? And yes, that? Uh, well, he yeah. he is a legend, a rock star. He is the Mick Jagger of mm-hmm. information design. Mm-hmm. Not that I think he wants to be. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even. There's a part of me that hesitates to 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 put him in that category. I think he's. Uh, He's someone who who tries to illuminate things. Mm-hmm. It's a much he's a much broader person, and mm-hmm. we got a chance to see the company, the creative team, and mm-hmm. different members got to go see him speak when he was in Atlanta. It was an amazing experience. Mm-hmm. He's so soft spoken, and his it's it, it, it was it was the most entertaining lecture I'd ever been in. Mm-hmm. Two and a half hour lecture flew by, but he has these principles or these 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 kind of things he hits on, and, and three of them really stuck with me. And I brought them back and kind of we did a blog post about mm-hmm. it because I just really wanted to highlight. And the animation was fun because I really do. He's such a We'll, we'll dra- drop the uh, link to the uh, blog post uh, when we uh, post. Yeah, it's go- yeah, to, yeah. called, yeah, Tufty Facts. Uh, yeah. But his three things, and I think th- they're, th- these are beyond design. They're beyond information design. They're beyond marketing. They are, these are just facts of life and, and anything anything you're going to do. But I, I love uh, the first one is show up early. Good things will happen. And mm-hmm. I it sounds corny. It sounds like oversimplified, but it's it's the truth. You get there early, you never know. There may be yep. not enough chairs. You, if you're having a meeting, you may not have printed something out. You may need something else. You may realize you may something. be the only one there with the most important person. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, there you <laughs> yep. go. Uh, and I think so. I think that's a really big one. I try to do that. The second one is respect your audience. They're not as disconnected as you think. And I think we tend to think of audience like uh, there's all these studies about how the, you know social media has reduced uh, attention span and all kinds of theories about the younger generations. Mm -hmm. I think you could take those with a grain of salt. I think mm-hmm. people are listening. People are paying attention more than you think. And I think you have to respect that. So never aim for the the, the lowest common denominator. Mm-hmm. And I think respect them. And I think it, you're never going to go broke respecting your audience. Mm-hmm. And the last one is, and this is my favorite, end things early. I love to give people <laughs> yeah. three minutes of their life back, 10 yeah. minutes. Like, are we yeah. done? Have we covered yeah. everything? Are we good? Yeah. Go, go, yeah. Go, go do something. You can, do, you can get water. You yeah. can go grab a bite to eat. Do something. Because uh, I think we all we're all looking at the clock and no one no one likes to get out on time or or a little after so if you can build that in if you can get through it it shows a respect for their time but also it's a great way to end the meeting yeah no one's ever mad that it ended early yeah except for i was probably a little disappointed that the lecture was over yeah exactly well you know depending on how much you paid for it it's like where are my extra three minutes man if i'll be honest i'll be be honest you paid for it yeah okay okay. i'm sorry about that thank you it was worth it 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 was was worth worth it was it worth it that's cool um, so he he's written um, uh, is it the history what is the, what's the title of his book uh, I, blah, 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 I'm sorry. I have okay, them, anyway. I have three I have all three yeah, uh, oh, anyway at the time they are three. the most gorgeous books they are perfect coffee table books but oh, yes. like his the biggest, one was the Napoleon his biggest yes yeah, is the yeah. March of Napoleon which yeah, I think yeah. it's made him famous but I think yeah. for him it was just no one understood. What the the march to was it Stalingrad or yeah. not Stalingrad yeah, uh, yeah, the march to Mos- the march to Moscow the march yeah. into Russia no yeah. one understood what the numbers meant and I think that's mm-hmm. a great thing it's like 
information design is about making these incomprehensible numbers make yep. sense. And I think we can look at that and go like, oh, two million people mm-hmm. died. We kind of know what that is, but do you really know what two million of something looks like? Mm-hmm. We have a concept of it, and we can measure it mm-hmm. against 10. Yep. But when you get into numbers of millions mm-hmm. or hundreds of miles, yep. we, we, do we have an experience of that? And I think this is where he really brought an idea of how to show how big the army was when it left and how far it traveled and how small it was by the, by the time, time it turned it tail. Got, yeah. And I think you start to realize, oh, yeah. wow, yeah. That's, they came home yeah. with a, a handful yeah. and they left yeah. with an entire country. Well, and I think that is what is engaging about all of his things. And that's and I mean, these books are beautiful and yes. these, these renderings, these depictions of complex situations, scenarios, timelines, all of it, it is so relevant for people today because – we have nothing but data. We're buried in data. We Big have a hundred pages of something to tell in a two second something on a page. Mm-hmm. And, you know, pictures do tell not only a thousand words, but, you know, hundreds of thousands of words sometimes. For and, sure. Yeah. And he makes yeah. one other point, which I love. Also, don't use a graph when a sentence will do. Yeah. Sometimes, mm-hmm. if it's a number, yep. like 56 people. We're arrested. You don't need a graphic for yeah. that. You can write yeah. that. That's just as powerful. That yeah. communicates as more efficiently than a graphic. So there are times. But yes, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a graph person. Yeah. I'm going to have no. to remind me of that one. Totally. Totally. No. And, and uh, okay. So let's talk about, um, again, not everybody is a, a brand aficionado, but just quickly, and let's just do quick hit, and then we'll, we'll come, in, come into the break. Uh, what what are some things that what are mistakes people make with brands that you see most commonly that anybody listening to this podcast should make sure they're not doing these things right? Well, think from a, from a from applying a brand standard mm-hmm. standpoint, like mm-hmm. if I was a designer applying yeah. another person's brand, or another company's brand, not to try to look for every loophole, mm-hmm. not to mm-hmm. try to find a way to do what I do. But to Mm -hmm. understand their brand and how can you make, how can you elevate it with what you have to work with? Mm -hmm. How can you do it without using that typeface Mm -hmm. that is hidden off in the corner? How do you play by the rules? How do you play by the rules in a smart way? Because I think that's, anyone can figure out a loophole. Well, well, you didn't say I couldn't put it on a gradient background. Yeah. I think you're you're ignoring the the spirit of the document of of a brand guideline. And I think from a a brand, creating a brand, don't agree to things you're not going to use. Don't yeah. don't adopt things. It happens time and time again. We work with hundreds of clients, and every one of them has a brand standards, and we get to know them. And every one of them has a little thing they don't put in the brand standards. Mm-hmm. It's like, by the way, don't use the purple. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah, yeah. they do not want to use this squiggly line. Don't right. use so the squiggly line. So it's here, and we show it as a part of the standard, and it's part of the system. But take we the never, time. Take ever, the time yeah. to get rid of it, yep. or don't agree to it in the first place. Yep. You know your brand, and I think that's 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 the biggest. From a from a, the from the corporation or the brand side of people, you know, I think it's just there's these brand guidelines loaded with rules, and then they yeah. leave things in there that they're never yeah. going to use. So, you know, keep it simple. Yeah, you, you know who you are. Yeah. go with go with that. Yeah. Well, and I think you also you just brought up gradient, and I think something that is has emerged for me more at least uh, in the last you know five five eight ten years is texture, like having a branded texture that's a piece of something. Um, you know, now that everything is digital, everything is motion in some regard. And instead of saying, here's our fixed static standards, and then when it comes to motion or moving video, we do all this craziness. You know, if you have a texture, if you have an element, if you have a thing that you're using consistently, do that, right? Absolutely. Do that. Like, yeah, do- textures, patterns. Mm-hmm. I think, too, it, it gives you another ownable mm-hmm. piece of your of your. Uh, brand Mm -hmm. and i think i think the introduction of texture in the way that it is Mm -hmm. is because because of the movement towards digital Mm -hmm. to differentiate texture adding texture creating what is give me an example of one of that like for a brand like where where, nike does a fantastic job what what is the texture what is the element sometimes they they do everything so nike is all over the board but i think they do a lot of advertisements that kind of feel wheat pasted and, and kind of have that texture of like wheat paste like a posters, this kind of mm-hmm. grat because it immediately gives you this like kind of street cred, like oh these are it's got mm-hmm. that wheat pasted poster feel. This is done guerrilla style mm-hmm. and just a kind of uh, imperfections in the typography. They yeah, yeah, really yeah. push that. It just there's there's a kinetic there's something kinetic and physical and tactile because they are highly digital brand, but they make tactile things. They make yeah. 
They make physical. Right, they, they have make technolo- physical goods. They have yeah. technology and yeah. stuff like that, but they make physical goods. And I think they do a great job of bridging that gap and using texture on yeah. in, in applications to to bring you into that world that is physical, but from across the globe and uh, yeah. through your iPhone. Yeah, and I think that's one of the exciting things. Um, and and we'll we'll wrap it here. But the, the exciting thing that I see now is. You know, we work with tangible companies that have to be digital and and operate in the intangible world. But we also work with a lot of intangible companies that increasingly have to have tangible experience, right, in Mm -hmm. trade show booths, in their corporate offices. Uh, You know, there are uh, digital companies that are creating physical offices now, you know, Mm -hmm. and and kind of spanning that where, you know, a, a brand isn't one or the other or these things and not those. It is this continuing sort of tapestry of uh, of experiences that people have for sure with an organization all right well we are going to be back in just a minute with kirk wells and we're going to jump into some of the crazy things that happen in this world Support for Extra 106.3 comes from Natural Body Spa and Skin Remedy, celebrating their 35th anniversary and offering gift cards in-store and online. You can discover Mother's Day and anniversary presents online at Natural Body Spa and Skin Remedy at naturalbody.com. Spring is here and baseball is back. You can't forget the derby. I love the hats. Do you have yours yet? My hat? I treated myself to a whole outfit. If you want to be able to treat yourself, then you should check out the Nest Savings Account at LGE Community Credit Union, where they want you to reach your savings goals faster. Take it from a pair of 680 The Fan wives. Head to lgeccu.org to find out what makes their team number one in Georgia. And we are back with Marketing Madhouse, and so much fun to have my guest today, um, Kirk Wells. Uh, we work together all the time, but we don't get to see each other all the time. Uh, you you hail from Louisville, yes? Right? So am I we, saying it right? Yes, and now even you know, yes, I am in Louisville. You currently Louisville. hail, from, currently hail from yeah. Louisville, yes, yeah. and you said it correctly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mm-hmm. I got it right. Without in, without trying, I think my Southern credits transferred from Georgia to yes, Louisville yes. pretty easily. <laughs> but most people, it's like Louisville. So yeah. I don't care. I'm not from Louisville. Louisville. Yes. Yeah. As, as mm-hmm. a, I'm not mm-hmm. gonna rep, I'm not gonna pretend to represent yeah. Louisville. I think they yeah. wouldn't have me. But yeah. I, I yeah. think you said That's however right. you say it. But uh, uh, but Kirk is in town. We do our do gooder program uh, once a quarter, and we are going to do our service day tomorrow. And so our out of towners. Uh, come in for uh, that and so since you're here we thought we'd get in here and and run our mouths some more than we ordinarily do Um, so I want to talk you're one of the craziest and funniest people that I know and I always ask people something crazy that's happened to them in their career and marketing and whatever and you have to have some absurd stories so can you just tell an absurd story I think I don't know how absurd it is, but I find it to be one that sticks with me. Mm-hmm. It's 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 more absurd as I get older, mm-hmm. or uh, funny to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but okay, so I'll really quickly. Twenty three years old, mm-hmm. first job, first first long job yep. out of college, not yep. the not the production house, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. And I'm and I'm there and I'm working and we're at an awards ceremony, mm-hmm. and I'd never been to an awards ceremony before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also uh, not really rolling in money at this point mm-hmm. you know uh beginning designer paying I'm, yep. now i'm now i'm paying for my car now i'm paying for my insurance i'm out of school there's no more help yep. from mom and dad i mean sure they'll pop by you know if i need a, a lamp or something they'll drop yeah. one off yep. from the house yep. so not rolling with a lot of money so mm-hmm. i find out you know so we go i get dressed up i put i put i'm sure it was a thrift store suit yep and a weird tie as always and get to the event really excited i feel like a kid amongst adults yep. which i no longer feel like but i was a kid amongst adults and then i found out oh it's not an open bar it's a cash bar yeah and i'm thinking oh man i like, remember the first time that happened reach in the pocket and i'm like oh man i got 20 dollars. yeah i can buy How far four can drinks four t- oh yeah you're four doing beers, the math but right no tipping I can right. get four. I, I can spread that out because it's a yep. four or five hour evening. Yep. You know, be responsible. Don't want to drive. Yep. It's good that I only right. had twenty, and I and, and yep. I, you know, I just fresh out of college. And so. again, this is all before everybody has credit cards all the time. It's cash, yes. cash, cash bar, right? cash, cash bar. bar. So I get seated, get, shake everyone's hand, meet people, and then I'm like, I wait. I don't know. I'm, I'm making sure that people at my table I don't know my company if, what if they don't have a beer is it weird if right, I go grab so a drink should I have one yeah. I saw people go get drinks so I'm like I can go get a drink mm-hmm. so I go get in line talking to a, for, a co to a co-worker uh, 
And I'm like, okay, I'm going to get one and head back. And I feel a tap on my shoulder. And I look around, and it is the owner of the company mm-hmm. that I work at. It's a small boutique company at the time. Mm-hmm. But he just taps me on the shoulder. And I'm like, oh, hey. Mm-hmm. And he said, uh, hey, Kirk, I, uh, he's got, I think he had his date with him, his mm-hmm. wife. I, I can't remember. Yeah. He said, uh, he said uh, Kirk, uh, I didn't – he taps. He does like the tap thing, like he's tapping, patting himself tapping down. On his pockets. Yeah, like he yeah, didn't uh-huh. remember. Yeah. And he's like, "Hey, Kurt, yeah. I, 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 uh, I didn't bring my wallet. I didn't know it was a cash bar. Mm-hmm. Can I borrow some money?" So I pull out the wallet. I'm like, "Here's where I shine." It's your first job. You've I'm been gonna, six months in. You're I'm like, "Oh yeah. yeah," and I'm like, "I got money. I can offer mm-hmm. to buy him a drink and get. I can get them both a drink. I can only have two now, but mm-hmm. that's going to be fine. That's yeah. that's probably best. I'm going to make a great impression." Mm-hmm. So I pull out my wallet and I pull out the twenty. And he goes, oh, great. He takes the 20. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Joke's on you. Put the wallet back in. Yeah. And, and I just I stay in line until my coworker in front of me gets, and I walk with her to the table because I've got nothing to take no. back. I didn't have a drink. Uh, and it was great. You know what? Hey, I was the DD that night mm-hmm. un- unintentionally. But, yeah, I, I, it seems it's There's just, a lot of real life lessons in that, though, right? Yeah. There's the um, I should have carry if, cash. If I could have uh, had it to do mm-hmm. over again, I would have gone, mm-hmm. oh, it's cash bar and uh-huh. patted myself Sorry, down. Sorry, I don't have any either. The, I should have gone to the one in the lobby <laughs> yeah. where you couldn't see me. Uh, I don't know if it helped my career with mm-hmm. in that in that organization. Mm-hmm. I was I was a, that was the longest four and a half hours. I bet it I've was ever spent. I bet it was. Yeah. Oh, my God. All right. OK, it, it was it was. Uh, I know. I know all about that. I think if I could have it back, I would I would have been like, no, you're good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, if I knew how mm-hmm, that was going to shake mm-hmm, out. But that's mm-hmm. okay. That's all right. That's all right. Um, let's talk about one of the things that I talk about a lot on here is, um, you know, there's people think about marketing. People think about, you know, sales and marketing and branding and they always think about who sells the most product right because they have the greatest visibility or like that's you know like that's that's the money side right the 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 capitalism side of a brand Mm -hmm. but you know a brand is so much more right a lot of people say a brand is your promise uh you know there are you know particularly at a time in the world where there is not enough talent to go around uh you know debatably depending on which company you're working for right now apparently there's too much talent in some places and not enough in others um but you know employer branding is important too right what does a company stand for with its people you know what kind of environment does it create so that's employer branding and then there are companies that are fabric of their communities right are a part of you know, the whole society around them. Um, and and so sometimes companies index in one place or another. And I know um, you're getting sucked into the next book, which sort of touches on this a little bit. But um, is there a company you think of that does a really good rounded job of all those things? Like what's one of your favorite brands? I think that the- it's going to be very specific yeah. in the industry, uh, and it is a marketing firm, design mm-hmm. firm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I, I love Lincoln Design Company. Okay. It is a, it is just a amazing mix of like artists, designers who are all skateboarders or into, uh, you know, just just a totally alternate lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, bearded dudes, mm-hmm. flat bill caps. Just tatted, tatted up. Mm-hmm. Everything on their, their their office space looks like the inside of my brain when I go to sleep. Mm-hmm. It is it is so inspiring. But they also seem like they're having fun, and they also do so much outside of work together mm-hmm. and as a company and for the, the local communities and things like that. Mm-hmm. I if you like, I I highly recommend. It just it's inspiring. Is it Lincoln, to see. Nebraska? I no, mean, I or believe the, it's okay. in the Pacific Northwest. This is okay. I I have not. I, I just it comes up in you my. You got more feed, homework. To and do. I, yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. Yeah. I look yep. them. I, I'm afraid if I look them up, I'll more. I will be like, yeah. yeah. But yeah, also, yeah. I'm also sad because that is not my culture at all. Mm-hmm. But it just it it's got a vibe of of where it feels like they built the company around what they love to do. Yeah. And which you should do, by which, the way. Everybody that, right? should be doing that. That yeah. should be it. Yeah. It shouldn't be I got this product, yeah. I want to sell it, let's bring people in to sell it. Yep. It should be, you know, like why is it why it's an act? Yeah. It's like you, you build it around what you're what you're trying to do, what what you're good at, what what you're offering that isn't the product yep. that's right. the which your passion that meets a need of a market and then if that's the core you're always going to be good. Yeah, because yeah. that's where it comes back to. Yeah. So it just it's something where I, I love having it in my feed because every day I'm like, Those yeah. are, that, that's oh what worship yeah. should be like, be, like having fun. I try to bring that energy to anything I do. 
again, I, I, I think if they if they heard me saying this and they looked me up, they'd be like, no, who's this? Who's, who's this nerd? Dude? Who's no. this? Yeah, they could just look at your back and know that you have the cred. Cause I've you, got the back, but I don't have this. Covered. I don't have the sleeves. I ran. I, you know, I have you run out of skin. I, I mean, run out of the, money. Yeah. Oh, like, it's the thing. Yeah, and and time, like with a kid, I I don't know if I I'd rather spend that four hours playing basketball with my son. Yeah. But yeah. yeah it, well, hey, you got to have priority, you know. But to yeah. that point, I um I went to Savannah a few years ago, and I remember I, w- I went to Savannah twenty five years ago, and then I went to Savannah five years ago, and that's, I that's remember that's the cycle. That's yeah, how, it, that's the that's the that's the time you want to give. Totally different city, right? In that period of time, but I remember going through uh, there and seeing. Uh, everybody sleeves co- covered head to toe in tattoos uh you know as servers in restaurants or working in different places we're engaging with all of them and i'm like number one scad owns savannah now right so it's all scad but all i was thinking was these people these parents in some cases think that their money is going to tuition but it's going to tattoos yeah i mean and why not seriously like honestly like, there's a lot of money going I on i feel like there's the a 20 percent better chance of getting hired as a chef if you've got sleeves yes like it's it, true the, you, yeah. it looks the part and i'm yeah. not making fun of chefs at all i like like no. i'm just saying like they're, yeah, they're, if you watch a cooking show you yeah, got, yeah. <laughs> you're already too cool come on man yeah. you're already cool yeah. now you've got a sleeve tattoo you're yeah. already making like the the best you know eggs hollandaise yeah. ever and you've got a really cool yeah. ironic tattoo like going your yeah. whole length no. I'm, well, a, I'm so Aaron jealous Aaron sanchez went you know off yeah, you you go, know, once once he got his tattoos man that's like oh my god you could i didn't think you could be now they're creeping up the next i that's where I, I yeah. could I could do that I could yeah. I would do the sleeve thing if I could afford it and yeah. felt brave but enough. But you ain't doing the neck thing. No, I also because you like gotta go home to mom. Gotta go home. Oh, she yeah. would not like it. No. Uh, I I did I do think mine are strategically mm-hmm. placed where I can cover them up. Not that she's offended by them. I did tell her that the, the one on the back is for her birthday. Yeah, but. no. T- 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 tell everybody what is what is the uh, the that that line and what is the story and what's on your back. I wish mm-hmm. if I could go back in time, mm-hmm. I would have made. Okay, so is the. Senior project in college, last mm-hmm. one. As I'm graduating UF, the the final challenge is okay. Market yourself to get a job. Mm-hmm. So build a website, make a resume, and I agonized over it for weeks and weeks. And I'm normally the person who come up with 100 ideas and shoot them all down. Couldn't come up with anything. And I was working late in the studio one night, and I heard Johnny Cash came on, and it was Daddy sang bass. Mm-hmm. And this this phrase shot into my head, and I wrote it down and built my entire online identity around it or at least uh, graphically mm-hmm. and then it's still with me to today mm-hmm. i never changed it i probably should i'm pretty sure people don't take no. it seriously no but i the the line that shot in my head was daddy worked hard and mama didn't raise no chicken mm-hmm. now horrible grammar aside that has kind of been the ethos mm-hmm. of of my design life mm-hmm. Uh, so I built that so I so raise no chicken.com is my my own personal mm-hmm. showcase site for things uh, it makes no sense. People are like, oh, are you a vegan? I'm like, no, I very much, I raise chickens actually, mm-hmm. which is the irony is now I raise mm-hmm. chickens. Mm-hmm. What happened to me? Mm-hmm. I don't know. You raised a chicken. I moved to right? Kentucky. Mama didn't raise I, no I, chicken, yeah. but I do. And I didn't realize yeah. until a year ago when I'm submerged in water, like in a pool, mm-hmm. partially, the way that my tattoo artist wrote it was it just looks like it says, daddy worked hard and mama didn't. <laughs> the raise no chicken is on the bottom, so it just says "Daddy worked hard, and Mama didn't." Yeah. So Calvin says, "Why does it say Daddy worked hard and Mama didn't?" didn't. And I'm like, and you're oh, like "Oh my god!" god. So right. now and I've this gotta... happens to us often in the design world with concepts when clients see things that we didn't, and you're like, "You're yeah. right." That's the last yeah. thing you want is for the client to catch. Like, did you know that this looks just like this? Ooh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know what we knew. What? We're going to fix that. We're going to make yeah, that happen. Yeah, we're going to fix that. We'll pay for that. Um, well, I think it is wonderful to have you here, and I think I'm going to have you back because you come to town regularly. Yes. I think we can talk about almost anything. Uh, you know, I'm, my final thought for, for this and for today is um, it has been amazing. I think we've worked together for 21 years. Yeah. Um, you know, the thing that I love about working with people for a long time is you become a lot of different people in that time. Um, You know, I think that uh, we have, you know, one, we get blessed to work in the creative field, which not everybody gets to do. But the other thing is we get to work together for a long time. And unfortunately, a lot of people are flying through life through revolving doors. You know, they don't get to form 
professional bonds, which, by the way, professional bonds, if you're doing it right, are actually friendships, you know, relationships. Um, And so, you know, we've lived so much life. It's not just we've worked together. We've lived so much life together and we've seen all these, you know, rises and falls. And I think that contributes to better work, too, because... You know, we don't just trust each other. We love each other. We yeah. know each other. And I think, yeah. too, yeah, it's that history. Uh, you build that trust in that relationship. But also you have a shorthand. Mm-hmm. You can mm-hmm. say, remember that project we did for mm-hmm. that? And I'm like, yes. Yes, that, that we did thing. The thing. Yeah, yeah, Boom. Yeah. We, there's a yeah. shorthand and there's a shared history. So we've made the mistakes together. Mm-hmm. We've ha- we've had the victories together. We've been in those rooms when it went right. And we've yeah. been in those rooms when... We need to make a change. We need to figure something out. When Fran Tarkenton did not care that I made you wear that oh, ring. He, no, yeah. he did not. He could he, not care less. Not and care. Made some, it was great yeah. to meet him. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is that. That's a whole other. Yeah. That's a whole other episode. That's, that'll be just yes, that meeting. We'll have a Fran Tarkenton meeting. But yeah, yeah. yeah. But just those experiences, mm-hmm. and I try to not. I tr- it's hard, but I try not to reminisce too much, like in front of the yeah. the bigger company, because I don't want to alienate anyone who yeah. wasn't there for those experiences. Yeah. But I do think when it is a, when it's closed quarters like this, or when it's smaller, when the, yeah. we have our one on ones, it, it's yeah. great to to kind of see where we've gone, and there is that shared experience. And I yeah. think there's nothing, there's no better teacher, but there's also no better connection yeah. than being in it together. Because I know, I I know, I yeah. know what you're going to do when yeah. things get tough, and you know what I'm going to do. Yeah. So you don't have to. It, is he, is he going to show up? Yeah. Is he yeah. going we'll, to do, do what it takes to make this happen? And it's one less thing you have to manage. You can move on to things, you you know, other we're, things. We're totally in the trenches together. We know that. And, th- and I will say this. I think clients really respect that. I think you make a great point about not alienate. You know, nobody wants to be outside the joke, right? Yeah. Oh, it's an inside joke. Or you, you weren't here that. Like, no, but, mm-hmm. And that's not who we We bring yeah. people into our history. But I absolutely think when you have longevity, it's an asset and letting clients know or letting others know. We've not only done what we do for a long time, we've done it together for a long time. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. going to benefit you in the long run. For sure. Yeah. Once yeah, once you're on the same page and everyone's working towards the same goal, towards your goal. Yep. It's all over but the shoot. It's amazing. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with me today. If there is someone that you think we should have on uh, the Marketing Madhouse You let us know. And remember, there is a fine line between genius and insanity, and we are walking it. Talk to you next time on Marketing Madhouse. Spring is here and baseball is back. You can't forget the Derby. I love the hats. Do you have yours yet? My hat? I treated myself to a whole outfit. If you want to be able to treat yourself, then you should check out the Nest Savings Account at LGE Community Credit Union, where they want you to reach your savings goals faster. Take it from a pair of 680 The Fan wives. Head to lgeccu.org to find out what makes their team number one in Georgia. Support for Extra 1063 comes from Natural Body Spa and Skin Remedy, celebrating their 35th anniversary and offering gift cards in store and online. You can discover Mother's Day and anniversary presents online at Natural Body Spa and Skin Remedy at naturalbody.com. Hey, homeowners, Southern Exteriors is your go-to for top-notch exterior services from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, you name it, and you get immediate service. Plus, their in-house warranty division means peace of mind for years to come. From leaky roofs to faded siding, trust Southern Exteriors for a quick-lasting transformation. Call 877-9-SOUTHERN or visit them online at southernexteriors.co. Southern Exteriors, quality and precision you can rely on for over 20 years. 